I want to invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, as we continue the series, The Blessed Life. We're looking at the eight Beatitudes that Jesus begins, the, the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. These eight characteristics, if we really want the blessings of God, and we want to walk in the blessings of God, and we want to know what it is to live in the kingdom and walk in the kingdom, be a part of the kingdom of God, then Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, he tells us how to do it. Verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And before we really dive into, into part 6 of the blessed life, God is doing some uh, incredible things in the life of discovery. What a, what, a, what a privilege it is to be a part of how God is moving uh, tomorrow night, be praying for this, this event, but also this ministry beyond just this one night. God's doing some amazing things on Monday nights right here. You can see Lyle, our darling, for more information about uh, what Monday night looks like for Recovery uh, Church. Uh, and I would encourage you to, to be a part of that and be praying for that. This past week, we launched Discovery Coffee Shop, and that was exciting. I was uh, encouraged to see different conversations and people praying and and. Bible studies and meetings and all kinds of different things happening throughout the week. And so uh, if you didn't have a chance to stop by last week, well, we're, we're open. So we're open. We're open 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, come on. It's going to be, I'm excited to see what God does through, through the ministry of this coffee shop. But uh, part six, part six, Matthew chapter five, verse eight, blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God as I, as I was uh, reading and rereading and rereading and just kept on reading this this very simple verse over and over and over again. I couldn't help but think of the innocence of a of a child, the innocence of a child. Uh, now you might be thinking you don't know my child, <laughs> uh, but 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 at one point you know you're holding them in their in your arms and and you're just looking in their eyes and there's just something so innocent, right? So pure and. And then they grow up and uh, it's like everybody wants, everybody wants a cat till they grow up. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and so, that, that, okay, we're not cat people, but, uh, um, but I, I, you know, if you're a cat person, that's cool too, but they do get big and then they start scratching. And so, but there's something so innocent in the life, this, this newborn's life, right? There's something so innocent, so pure. And as they grow up and as they uh, are impacted by the world, and their character begins to change. You know, one of the decisions to even um, homeschool our girls, there were, there were lots of decisions uh, that went into it. But, but one of it was we noticed, we noticed our, our youngest, just how she was speaking and speaking with a harsh tone. It's like, that's not you. That's not, that's not the baby we know. And uh, we came to find out the impact of a teacher seven, eight hours a day shouting for all of those hours at her classroom and, and just the impact. So we had to make decisions just for us. I'm not saying you make the same decision by any stretch of me, but, but they grow up and then are impacted by the, the world. And they were once so innocent and pure. Blessed are the pure heart for they will see, for they will see God. The Lord led me to the text in Matthew chapter nine, 19, Matthew chapter 19. Would you write that reference down? We'll get there in, in about a year from now. Matthew chapter 19. But verse 13 says, then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray. But the disciples rebuked them. Jesus said, leave the little children alone and don't try to keep them from coming to me because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as, as these. The disciples were like, nah, Jesus needs some rest. And Jesus saw the children coming. He said, no, 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 bring them, bring them to me. Don't hinder them from coming to me. I love what Jesus said to the disciples. Because the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. There's something about the purity and innocence of children. There's something, uh, uh, there's something about the childlike faith. Do you remember that moment that you gave, your, you gave your life to Christ? And I mean, you were like on fire for the Lord. And, and then your first church hurt or your first situation where it's like, whoa, is this really the faith that I signed up for? And thankfully, it's not about people. It's about one person. His name is Jesus. And so it's possible that, yes, you, yes, along the way, you were hurt. And I hate to tell you, but you're going to be hurt again because the church is made up of imperfect people. There's only one perfect person. And his name is Jesus Christ. And you surrender to him, not, not other people. And so don't, don't allow other people and how other people's actions and words and all kinds of doings take you away 
from serving the living God. But as we grow up and as we face life and the harshness of life, there's nothing like a, it's nothing like middle school, right? <laughs> Where it becomes so real and it's like, man, you call me fat? I'm not fat. My mama said I was healthy. And, uh, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, what, what's going on here? And uh, as we grow up, it just gets harder and harsher. And it's, wow, the wickedness and evil. And so today, the main idea is we will never experience the blessed life until we prioritize purity. Until we prioritize purity. Now, this is going to be a message. Uh, we're going to focus in on the family unit, the home. But believe me that this is not just a message for families. If you're a single folk and you're living alone, listen, this is a message for you, I guarantee. Without Jesus, hear me clearly, there is no such thing as a pure heart. Again, verse 8, chapter 5, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. But without Jesus, there, there is no such thing as a pure heart. It's Jesus that takes over, and it's Jesus that, as we just sang, clothes us and, 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 and forgives us, washes uh, all of our sin away. Without Jesus, without Jesus, there is no such thing as a pure heart. And so what we battle this side of heaven is an ongoing warfare. There's, there's a war that is waging. The enemy that once held you, once held you, he, he, he wants you to he wants to keep you. He wants to pull you back into the darkness that you were set free from. And so there is a war that's waging because of the brokenness and sinful nature of this world. There's a war that's waging. Paul writes to the church in Rome, chapter 7, verse 21. I would encourage you to write that reference down, Romans 7, 21. And he says this, so I discover this law. When I want to do what is good, evil is present with me. For in my inner self, I delight in God's law, but I see a different law in the parts of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and taking me prisoner to the law of sin in the parts of my body. Verse 24, he says, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Verse 25, thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So then with my mind, I myself am serving the law of God, but with my flesh, the law of sin. So Paul's writing to the church. And he says, hey, there's a real war around me. I, I want to do what is right. I know the right things to do, but when it comes time to do it, there's times that I don't do what I know I ought to do. I'm sure Paul's not alone in this, right? Like we're all, we, would, would you just be honest enough to say, hey, there's moments that I know, I know the right thing to do, but I don't do it. Why? Because there's a war waging there's a war waging around us. Look at verse 24. He says, what a wretched man I am. Do you see his acknowledgement? <laughs> what a wretched man I do. Because I know the right things to do, but I don't do it. What a, what a wretched man I, I, I am. And then he says, then he asks this question, who will rescue me from the body of death? Who will rescue me? And his answer is Christ Jesus alone. Without Jesus, there is no such thing. As a pure heart, Romans chapter eight, verse one says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Allow that to sink deep within you for a moment. I'll be reminded of this truth. There is, there is no condemnation, no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The enemy would love for you to focus on the sin, focus on your failures, We'd love to shame you of your past or bring it up again and again and again. Uh, but we're reminded through scripture, focus on the, the Savior, that those who are in Christ Jesus have been forgiven, have been set free. You're no longer attached to the, 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 the past. You've been set free from it. There's freedom in Christ Jesus. Focus on the Savior. Church, fix your eyes on Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Verse 2, Romans 8, because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free. Did you say set you you're free? Any, anybody free today? Anybody free today? You've been set free from the law of sin and death. Sin no longer has a hold on you. You've been set free from the sin. You're, you're empowered by the living God to do what he's called you to do. Blessed are the pure in heart. 
for they will see God. So how do we prioritize purity in our lives and in our home? Would you write this down? First is pursue perfect purity of the heart. I want to encourage you to pursue perfect purity of the heart. Anything less than perfect purity is impurity. Anything less than perfect purity is, is impurity. When, when I go to uh, G. Allen's fine jewelry, uh, and I, this is hypothetical, by the way. Uh, I love you, Greg, but uh, I'll just already got a ring. Uh, and so, and, and I'm looking at the ring selections, you know. Uh, I'm not asking them, hey, give me like one that's, you know, half pure, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like the half, you know, uh, not that most of us probably wouldn't even know what that even looks like, but, 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 but go with me. You know, we want the pure thing. We want, we want the, the all in thing. No, not just the half thing. You know, we want the pure thing. Pursue perfect purity of the heart. Ephesians chapter five, Paul's writing to the church at Ephesus. And if you've studied Ephesians, we've studied Ephesians before. I've told you that at this day and age, when Paul's writing the church, they're a major port town. And so many cultures are colliding in Ephesus at this time. It's like a New Orleans, a modern day New Orleans. Lots of flavors, lots of flares. There's a whole lot of religion though. And uh, the pagan church is growing by leaps and bounds. Why? Because it's like, hey, you come on in, have sex with whoever you want, and everything goes in, in our temple. And so their membership was growing rapidly. Uh, <laughs> and so Paul's writing to the church in, in Ephesus, and he's saying, hey, no, no, no. The culture doesn't dictate our standard. Christ alone dictates our, our standard. And, and so knowing that, we, we read chapter 5, verse 3. But sexual immorality and any impurity or greed should not even be heard of among you as is proper for saints. Do you see this? This is Paul's encouragement to the church in verse Verse 3 of chapter 5, sexual morality and any impurity or greed should, should, not, should not even be heard of among you. And then he says, as is proper for the saints. What does that mean? That means there's a different standard by which we, we live. There, there's a different standard uh, by, by which we conduct ourselves. And so no matter what the world is screaming is, is okay, but we look to the word of God to say, is this okay? Is this how I should live my lives? I wonder today, are there any impurities that you have allowed into your life? Are there any impurities that you have allowed into your home? Perhaps write that question down and prayerfully consider it this week. God, would you reveal? Or even as I present the question, you already know. You know what you did last night? You know what you did, you did a couple days ago? You know the conversations that took place? You know the, you, you know. Are there any impurities that you've allowed into your home? That you need to ask the Lord to remove and replace with things of him. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 4 says, he continues obscene and foolish talking or crude joking are not suitable, but rather giving thanks. For know and recognize this, every sexually immoral, impure, or greedy person who is an idolater, does not have an inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and, and of God. The question is, have you been changed? I mean, ha, ha, have, you been, have you been changed? Paul's writing to the church. He's addressing this issue of cultural divide, this, this, itch, this issue of sexual immorality that is creeping into the church. And it's not just back then. It's here right now. And he's saying none of this is suitable. None of this should exist. Why? We're called to be holy as God is holy. How, do, how, how does the world know that we are his if we act just like him? If our standard is the same, if we share the same standard, how, how does the world know that we belong to him, that we have been for, forgiven of all of our sins, that there is a future that waits in him? I want to encourage us as we consider the pursuit of perfect purity in order to prioritize purity in our homes. I want to encourage the church, those who are in Christ Jesus, uh, to stop joking about sinful subjects. Stop joking about sinful subjects at, in your home. Stop 
joking about sinful subjects in your workplace, in your neighborhood. Stop joking about sinful subjects. Why? Be, be, because we're, we're called to be different. We're called to pursue perfect, a perfect purity. There must be a difference about us. How we live, how we conduct ourselves. There is a difference. There should be a difference about us. When a lost world sees the church. Parents. You are teaching your children all kinds of behaviors. But do you realize, particularly, you're teaching them sinful behaviors? Why do I stay, say that? I, I say that because your children, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, they're listening to you, they're watching you, you have an influence over their lives. Even if you think you've put them to bed and, and y'all can do, you know, watch whatever, listen to what they're, they're watching and they're listening. They can see it in you. How you speak is how they're going to speak. They're going to grow up in this culture in your home. And the question is, will they grow up in a, a pure culture? Will they, will they grow up in, with purity in, in, in our home? And, and so I want to challenge you, parents. Consider your lives that this life has... You bring children into it. It's no longer about you. It's no longer about you. You've been given the responsibility to disciple that child or those children. Some of y'all need like buses. You know, you're having so many kids. It's incredible. And, and uh, but, but listen, you, you've been called by God to disciple them. You've been given the responsibility. It's not the teacher. It's, it's not your neighbors. It's not the babysitter. It, it certainly isn't the, the, the streaming services. It's your responsibility that God has called you to disciple up, to train up, to teach your children to live pure lives. The best way to teach your children purity is to live a pure life. It's to live a pure life. And the only way to live a pure life is to is to have a pure heart. The only way to live a pure life is to have a pure heart. See, we, we can fake it. I mean, some of us can fake it and fake it, but, but it's hard for the rest of our lives to, to fake it. The only way to live a pure life is to have a pure heart. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 says, The heart is more deceitful than anything else and incurable. Who can understand it? The heart is more deceitful than anything else. That, that, that's why we must give Jesus our, our entire being. You know, that, that, that's why when he comes in and takes over, he, he removes that heart of stone, that hardened heart. He breaks it down. He gives us a, a new heart. And it's sad as we're in this war that's waging and being pulled uh, this way and that way, we have to be so careful that we are not allowing the influences of this world uh, to make the decisions, to make our, our, our decisions. I, I, I can't tell you what, what grieves me the most is when I hear people make decisions based on how they feel. Uh, I, 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 we, we must not make decisions based off of how we feel because I got to tell you, my feelings go up and they can go down real quick, real quick. I mean, one week we're on fire as a family, we're going to eat right. We're going to do this thing. We're going to put this routine. And it's like the next day, it's like, where is that ice cream, man? I need, I need, I need that tub, that whole, that whole tub, you know? And so if we're making decisions based off of how we just feel, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. And so stop. Stop making decisions based on how you feel. Especially this war that's waging. The moment we take our eyes off of Christ and our eyes are put on anything or anyone else, we have to be so, so careful. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17, it's a lengthy passage, but, but, but hang with me. Ephesians 4, 17, therefore I say this and testify in the Lord, you should no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their, their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. Verse 19, they became callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity 
for the practice of every kind of impurity with the desire for more and more. But, but that is not how you came to know Christ. Assuming, assuming you heard about him and, and were taught by him as the truth, as the truth is in Jesus. Do you see that? The truth is in Jesus. Verse 22 to take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires. T take it off. To be renewed, verse 23. To be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self, the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of the truth. There is a new you. There is a New creation. If anyone has, has, has surrendered over to the Lord Jesus, you are a new creation. Put away the former things. How do we prioritize purity in our home? Hey, start with pursuing perfect, perfect purity of the heart. Second, second, as we talk about our homes, second is I want to encourage you to parent to the heart. Parent to the heart. What I mean by this, most uh, parents, and, and, and you can observe this yourself, and I'm sure you have, most parents parent toward actions, but they don't parent towards the heart. I, I, want to, uh, I want to be the best encourager of my children when they do something right. I want them to know that they've done something right. I, I want to, them to know that they are valuable. I want them to hear it from, from, from daddy. They're the most beautiful girls in the world. Uh, I don't want the only time they hear me speak is when I'm getting on to them. And, and I'm afraid if we're not careful, if we're not careful, the only time our children hear us is when we're parenting to the actions rather than their heart. Again, what a responsibility. And what an awesome opportunity. Some of y'all are grandparents who are thinking, well, what does that have to apply to me? You can be the greatest support and encouragement to your children that are having no children. Your season isn't over. You haven't retired. You don't just get to spoil them. Your children still need you. They need that encouragement, by the way. And not just when you miss it as a parent. Not, not just when your, your children miss it as a parent. Man, they need that encouragement, grandparents. They need that encouragement. And that what they're doing is, is good and it's right, and to keep on, especially as the world is saying, just throw a, throw a screen in front of them, or, 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 or you know, whatever the thing this world is screaming this week. You know? No, keep, keep doing the right thing. Parent the heart. We, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at, at his appearance or his stature because I have rejected him. Humans do not see what the Lord sees, for humans see what is visible. Humans see the outside. Humans see the actions, the abilities, but the Lord sees the heart. The Lord sees the heart. What's happening here? Samuel's called by God to go anoint the next king. Saul's out. Saul's out. Samuel's called by God to go anoint the next one. And so he goes to Jesse. And he says, Jesse, bring your sons before me. I'm going to anoint the next king. And Jesse, what does Jesse do? Of course, Jesse throws the, the firstborn uh, as first, hoping that that's who he would go with. Uh, the firstborn doesn't cut it. The secondborn doesn't cut it. He goes through seven of them. And Sam is like, none of these are it. Don't you got another one? He goes, I got one more. He's out in the fields, but, but you don't really want him, right? And he said, no, bring him on. Bring him on. And the Lord tells Samuel, he is the one. And it wasn't because he was the oldest biggest, the strongest. It was because of his heart. It's because of his heart. And as we, as we will study through Matthew, and if you read through all four gospels, what you will see again and again and again is often this tension between Jesus and the religious leaders of the day. There's still some tension, by the way, in our culture, but Jesus battled the religious leaders of the day because they said, here's all the dudes. You better know all this. You better have the right look. I mean, these guys were, they, they were, th these religious leaders of the day were in the town center shouting, you know, what they knew because look at how good, look at how religious we are. And Jesus is like, no, nah, I, I don't care about that. <laughs> I've come for the heart. I've come for the heart. In fact, he says, uh, Matthew chapter 15, verse seven, hypocrites. Jesus was just bold. Hypocrites. Isaiah prophesied correctly about you. 
when he said, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me. And so there was this tension between Jesus and the religious leaders of, of the day, because Jesus was focused on capturing their heart. When the religious leaders were all about the external, what they, what they looked. And one of the biggest mistakes in parenting is focusing on the outward only. I already talked about this. A couple weeks ago, I shared a quote that rules without relationship lead to rebellion. Rules without relationship lead to rebellion. And if you're not careful and, 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 and as best as you can, bringing that encouragement, but yet bringing that discipline. I'm not saying you let one go. I'm saying there has to be somewhat, somehow, some kind of a balance. <laughs> that yes, you correct when correction is needed, but you also encourage where that encouragement is needed. The right actions come from a right heart. And one of the things that I would encourage you, parents, grandparents, maybe some of y'all are, you're praying that one day for, for a child, you can begin praying now, God, would, would you help me to be the best example of you to my children? Would you begin praying for their heart? Parent to the heart. That's how we prioritize purity in our home. <laughs> Lastly, would you write this down? Protect your heart. If we're going to prioritize purity in our homes, we need to protect, we need to protect our hearts. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 says this, Proverbs 4 verse 23, guard your heart above all else for it is the source of life. Guard your heart above all else for it is the source of life. Psalm 119 verse 9 says this, how can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping your word. I have sought you with all my heart. Verse 10. Don't let me wander from your commands. I have treasured your word in my heart. So that I may not sin against you. And so the question. Do we know the word? Do we know this, this word that is available to us? Do we know it? Right at the core. So that we might not sin against God. If we're going to protect. Prioritize purity in our, our home. We, we need to protect our, our, our hearts. And we experience purity as a family by protecting our hearts with the living word of God. The challenge for this week, the challenge for all of us to consider is what steps do I need to prioritize purity in my home? What steps do you need to take to prioritize purity in your home? What's going on that maybe no one else sees but God, by the way? Just a reminder, God sees it all. What's going on behind the closed doors in, in, in the private that needs to change within you or within your home in order for the Lord Jesus to be the center and foundation? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Some of you are like, man, I want to I wanna see him. I want to taste and see that the Lord is good. How can, I, how can I see him? Jesus tells us, have purity. Prioritize purity. I want to close with uh, Matthew chapter 21. Today is referred to as Palm Sunday. It's always the week before Easter. And there's a reason, <laughs> in case you were wondering. Matthew chapter 21, verse, verse 6 says, The disciples went and did just as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey. Then they laid their clothes on them, and, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. That's why it's called Palm Sunday, just in case you were wondering. Verse 9, then the crowds who went ahead of him 
And those who follow shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in an uproar saying, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Hundreds of thousands had, had gathered for the Passover, the feast of the Passover. They'd come from all over. And here comes Jesus. Knowing what is ahead. And fulfilling prophecy. Here comes Jesus. Riding in. To Jerusalem. On this lowly donkey. And notice the response of the people. Hosanna. To the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. They're cheering. They're shouting. They're celebrating. If you turn to chapter 27, Matthew chapter 27, you'll see that one week later, their shouts move from Hosanna to crucify him. Jesus rode in on a donkey knowing what he was riding into, but knowing that there was no other way to accomplish the forgiveness of sins, your sins and my sins, to take us from death to life. On a side note, I want to encourage you to, to join us this Friday at noon if you're able to. A special Good Friday worship gathering where we will focus on the death of our Savior take communion and take time to reflect and remember his great sacrifice, his body that was broken for us, his blood that was shed for us. If you continue Matthew chapter 21, you see that after the crowd's answer who this man is, it's Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus comes in verse 12 and he wipes out the temple. Why? People had come into the temple and they were selling these things and ripping people off. And so Jesus comes and he starts throwing things. Uh, that's exciting. And he says, no, you got it wrong. Uh, it is written, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it into a den of thieves. So he cleans the slate. But, but note, as we close, note verse 14, Matthew 21. The blind and lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. When the chief priests and scribes, the religious leaders there, saw the the wonders that he did, and the children shouting in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David. They were indignant. They were furious and said to him, do you hear what these children are saying? Jesus replied, oh man, I wish I could have been there that day. Jesus replied, yes. Yes. Have you never read? You have prepared a praise from the mouths of infants and nursing babies. This is so good. After Jesus cleans the place up, all these religious leaders, they are furious. What did you? Don't miss up. Uh, it's easy to miss what the children are shouting here. Do you see it? Hosanna to the son of David. It's never hit me like it did early this morning. But the children are shouting the same thing their parents were shouting on the street just moments ago. Your children will prioritize what you prioritize. Your children will follow what and who you follow. Blessed are the pure in heart. They will see God. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes? All across this place, those joining us online, Take a moment and just ask God, what 
what is, what is my response from this message? All of this, what is my response? Maybe you already know your response. Maybe, perhaps ask God, God, would you examine my heart? Would you examine my heart? Maybe you just, your prayer needs to be creating me a clean heart, Psalm 51, verse 10. Creating me a clean heart. Maybe there's, you already know some impurities that are exist in you. Maybe that no one else knows. You think no one else knows. And it's possible no one else knows other than, than our God, who's the eyes of the Lord are in every place, the scripture tells us. But, but maybe, maybe right here, right now, you need to, you need to just surrender, repent of that, that impurity that exists in you. And say, God, give me a pure heart. Help me to seek purity even in this world that is everywhere I turn it seems to be impurity God help me to be different help me to live for you as people are praying all across this place people are praying online I wonder if there's someone that's gathered here that's never surrendered over to the Lord Jesus and you're like what's been missing can I tell you emphatically it's the Lord Jesus he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Oh, that's what's been missing. In Christ Jesus, there is life. Apart from Jesus, there is only death and destruction. That's what his word declares. And so people are praying all over. If today is the day of salvation for you, I want you to know today on the authority of Scripture, Jesus has made it possible to receive the forgiveness of sins, to have a living hope, and for heaven to await one day only through his shed blood and the resurrection. Is that possible? So as people are praying, if that's your prayer today, would you pray from your heart to the Lord's? Would you pray from your lips Dear Jesus, I confess you as Lord. I confess you as Lord. Your boss, your master of my life. I realize that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I've missed it. And you are the Savior, the only Savior. I trust completely in you. To forgive me, to save me from all my sins. I believe in you came to this earth, you died on a cross, you were placed in a grave, and you rose victorious for me, for the world, and today I receive the gift of salvation. Thank you for saving me. If that's your prayer today, whether in the house or online, would you thank him for saving you? Right where you're at, would you just thank him? Maybe it's been a while, you've been saved for a little bit, but, but, but maybe it's been a while since you said, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. You need to just thank him. In a moment, we're going to sing a song as we sing this song. There's going to be men and women. If you're in the house, there's going to be men and women. Different corners uh, up front here, different corners that would love to pray with you. Maybe you came in, something heavy, and you surrender it over to the Lord. There's something special about somebody just praying for you. Reminder that you're not alone. Maybe you're wondering what your next step is. Whatever your decision is today, would you have the courage to, to move as the Spirit of God leads you to move? Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. Father, we are, thank you, Lord, that in an impure world, the church can and must live pure lives. Help us, Lord, to have a, have a childlike faith. Lord, to follow you all the days of our lives, to live for your glory. We ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.